Coins are a genuine mode of actually touching civilizations and people of the past who have handled these. Their citizens have died and their houses are gone, but we can visit the great Roman Empire through the coins of its Caesars. Few civilizations throughout history have made such a profound impact on the human story as that of the 12 Caesars of the Roman Empire. We have 12 of these with us today in replica form. Here's the replication of the major coins struck by or caused to be struck by the 12 Caesars of Rome. We have Julius Caesar who started the thing and got killed for it. Augustus Caesar, his great nephew and appointed heir. Tiberius Caesar, Caligula, we're going to learn about them briefly. Claudius, Nero, Galba, Otho, Viltilius, Vespasian, Titus, and Domitian. Even among the great figures of the ancient world, Julius Caesar has few equals. Curiously, two of them, Cleopatra VII and Augustus, were related. The former as a wife and the latter as his heir. Driven by an intense desire for personal glory, Caesar conquered Gaul and defeated a host of enemies, both foreign and Roman, throughout the Mediterranean world. He assumed the title dictator for life and was ready to pursue other ambitions when he was murdered by conspirators in Rome on the Ides, the 15th of March, 44 BC. And then that's, that's when we have the amazing career of Caesar Augustus beginning. And this is a photograph of a coin struck by Julius Caesar. Now to Augustus Caesar. He was Rome's first emperor. Let's trace the record just briefly. He exercised great power from 44 BC when he was appointed heir of the slain uh, individual Julius Caesar. His most remarkable achievement was to emerge victorious in the Civil War. Uh, they had a triumvirate of generals who were ruling and then he finally emerged successful. Here's a coin struck by him, the gold aurea struck at Lugdunum uh, in uh, 15 through 12 BC. Tiberius, who followed him, second his service to Rome was second only to that of Augustus. But becoming emperor was, he was beset with troubles that stemmed primarily from dynastic infighting and an unhealthy reliance on his Praetorian prefect Sergenus, his reign became so difficult that he abandoned the capital, spent the last days ruling from an isolated island, the Isle of Capri. But here's a coin that was struck. Then we have Caligula. Now, I said a moment ago, it wasn't a lot of fun to be an emperor of Rome in those days. And let's get to a few of the details. Few emperors are as infamous as Caligula, whose sordid reputation still precedes him nearly 2,000 years after his reign to this very day. Not long after he succeeded his great uncle Tiberius, the optimism of Caligula's fellow citizens who thought he would be an excellent Caesar, excellent emperor, was replaced by grave disappointment. He most likely suffered from a form of insanity and seemed to become increasingly irrational with the passage of time. Caligula, uh, his wife and child were all murdered in a palace coup. So see, it wasn't a lot of fun, but during his lifetime, he struck this coin. And we have a replica of that that you'll see at the conclusion. Claudius, uh, despite a ruin his personal life, he ruled for 13 years. He had physical uh, infirmities, but he ruled with great care, Claudius, and he struck a coin. Nero, the last of the Julio-Claudians to reign, uh, came to power in AD 54 as the adopted son and successor of Claudius. He quickly shed the influence of his mother by ordering her murder and then reigned, it seems, with a little tolerance for attention to the annoying details of running an empire. He is said to have indulged in art, theater, and music. After a reign of nearly 14 years, rebellions in the provinces rapidly brought down his regime, and Nero chose suicide over execution. Wow. It wasn't any fun. And that was a coin struck by him. Galba. Once in Rome, Galba's rule was never secure, for he refused to bribe the soldiers 
and did not condone corruption. His murder was arranged by Otho, an embittered compatriot of former friend, who was willing to lavish bribes in his desire to succeed Galba. So he had him murdered. And uh, so uh, Galba at least had a coin in his honor. One of Rome's least impressive emperors, Otho had lived among the ruling class before he was made governor of faraway Lestania, modern Portugal. So the emperor Nero could have his wife Papeia to himself. So Emperor Nero could have his wife Papeia to himself. When Galba's revolt broke in neighboring Spain, Otho joined him, hoping to be named successor, but Galba had no such plan. Otho was not up to the job, however. He reigned only three months before committing suicide. So it wasn't a lot of fun to be a Caesar, but that's a coin that was struck. Vitilius, similar disappointing character, next. Vitilius rose quickly, events moved so rapidly that he had little chance to enjoy his new office. After eight months as emperor, he was overthrown and murdered. When legions loyal to his successor, Vespasian entered Rome. Enter Vespasian. He was the general in Judea who had a son, Titus. Vespasian went to another part of the world because he had desire on the palace and throne in Rome, left things to Titus. What did Titus do? Help me out. His son, Titus, it burned the temple in 70 AD. Uh, what day did he burn the temple? Any? What's that? Tisha B'Av. That's right, the ninth of Ab. That's late in the fall. That's the tragic day for Israel. On the ninth of Av, they call it Ab, we call it Ab, Av. Either way, B and V is interchangeable. The ninth day of Ab, late in the fall, on the Jewish calendar, the ten spies brought back a wicked report, evil report. On the ninth of Av, Nebuchadnezzar destroyed the temple in Jerusalem. The ninth of Av, this was done. The ninth of Av, 35 A.D. Oh, Bar Kokhba was with the false Messiah, was killed by the Romans, and all of Jerusalem was destroyed. That was the beginning. It's the tragic day for Israel. But you know about those things. All right, Vespasian became emperor, and uh, uh, then the, uh, Vespasian entered Rome, so Vitellius was in no more, and so Vespasian came the last day. During his reign in 70 AD, the temple in Jerusalem was destroyed by Roman soldiers led by his son Titus, and that is a coin struck by him.